Restoration projects for bagpipes come from all over the world. Uh, sets like this one could come from a, it's a silver and ivory set of Peter Henderson's. It's a classic bagpipe of all time. Uh, this is a local one just come from Edinburgh, but I got bagpipes sent to me from uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA, um, Brazil. Bagpipes from all over because um, I think I've built up a reputation for the restoration of pipes now. And probably about two thirds of my projects are restoration jobs, and one third is brand new sets. With to me, they've been lying underneath a bed or in the garage or attic for thirty years, and they come in and I open the box. I don't know what to expect, and it could be one like this, where it's um, mouse-eaten cover and mildew bag, and it's looked purely disgusting. But you have to look through that and see that there's. Uh, something special underneath it and it's such a, a fantastic thing when you, something really awful look is in the box and then two, two weeks later you've oiled it, polished it up, cleaned it and suddenly it's, it's reincarnated as a, as a new instrument again. Instead of being a pile of sticks, it's a classic bagpipe again. The bagpipes in 1900 was closer to A and fashion has made it so that bagpipe a uh, tuning has gone up and keeps it keeps on going up and up a few cents every few years and they're just far too flat and the way to test them is just to pop a reed in and blow and see what what the keynotes are see what you get and how true that the note is to a when you pop a reed in these pipe chanters are all uh, old ones which are pretty flat the bagpipe pitch has gone up at least a semitone in the past hundred years so these chanters and there are 170 there, um, will be uh, from A up to B flat and, and through. And the oldest one there is from 1860, Alexander Glenn, 1860. If it's uh, fairly wildly out, yeah. you, can <laughs> you can tell straight away by ear. But if I want to, if, if I get a chanter and it's 1970s, 1980s, it's going to be a little bit flat, you test it with a tuner, an electric tuner, and yeah. it'll tell you. Sure. You can sink the reed deeper, but that'll affect uh, different notes in different ways. Um, you can pick the holes, although unrecommended, because it ruins the chanter. It's better to, get, to accept the chanter for being what it is, a flatter chanter, rather than start gouging holes. I get a chanter like this, this is a very old one here. This is a, an ebony, Peter Henderson, and it's been played so much here that the holes have actually gone round through rubbing. When I play like that, and it's, it's, see the, the, this here, there's a movement on the bagpipe, you flick your thing, pinky, and the holes have gone smooth through a 120 year old play.